Hey, how goes it? Welcome back to Dividend Compounders with Cheese. Today, let's talk about Dominion Energy, ticker symbol D. D is trading near the same price as it was back in 2007. The company has seen better days as their stock right now looks like a hot mess. So because it's trading near its 52 week low, is it a good time to buy Dominion Energy or not? In this video, we are going to look at the intangibles, the finances, and run some valuation models like the one you see on your screen to determine if it's a delicious or a disgusting dividend stock. So I got both both my bachelor's and my master's degree in the state of Virginia. So I'm pretty informed with Dominion Energy, as they are the electric utility company for the Commonwealth. It is worth mentioning that they are a regulated utility, so they can't price hike whenever they feel like it. They have to jump through hoops and loops, and there's a lot of red tape with government regulations in place. If you live in South Carolina, you're probably also aware of Dominion Energy. Regardless, they provide natural gas and electricity for over 7 million customers. This includes B2B and B2C. And Dominion Energy has a business model that just cannot disappear overnight. And unfortunately, the utility sector has been beaten badly lately because although they have juicy dividend yields, the interest rates are so high, people are investing in treasury yields instead. But the thing is, interest rates will eventually come back down to earth, whereas the utility dividends will still be juicy and have capital appreciation in the meantime. So I think the temporary gains of the treasury yields is so short-sighted. But that's just my opinion. Then again, I also understand the mentality of investors who are shifting over to safer investments because with stocks, there is always going to be some element of risk. With treasury yields and bonds, there's literally no risk. But I digress. This is a channel that is focused on dividend compounders. So let's check out their dividend over the years. So back in 2013, Dominion paid $2.25 in dividend per share. And when you fast forward, it looks like they did increase their dividend, but there seems to have been a cut in 2020. And I'll explain more on that later. Now let's look at their dividend profile. The dividend yield right now is really juicy at 5.69%. The payout ratio is a huge red flag as it is above 136%. My goodness gracious. And although the dividend payout ratio is really high, the board of directors and the leadership team have agreed to pay another dividend dividend of 66 cents for the next quarter with an ex-dividend date of December 1st, 2023. All right, moving right along. Let's talk about the economic moat. Does Dominion Energy have a competitive advantage? Is there a moat? Is there a high barrier to entry? Dominion has an economic moat in the regions that they operate in because when you buy a home or when you move into a rental, you don't have the luxury and the choice of like three different phone carriers like we do with our smartphones. You either pick the designated utility utility company that's within your area to power your home, or you can be off grid and do a DIY solar project. If you're really trying to stretch the dollar, you can also buy a pack of candles to light your home at night. But here's where I'm coming from. At the end of the day, you come home, you turn on the lights, you turn up the thermostat because it's winter right now and it's pretty cold. You plug in your phone and you drop a protein bar in the toilet. You hop in the shower and you turn the dial to the warmest setting, even though you know about the benefits and you are aware of Wim Hof. Afterwards, you feel lazy to cook. So you put some leftovers from the fridge into the microwave and you heat it up. Then you watch a show on YouTube or Netflix. In the Western world, we love that type of comfort. Who is not going to pay their utility bill? This is a recession-proof industry. For the most part, if you are able, you're going to pay that electricity bill month after month. And during my time in the infantry, sometimes we would be conducting operations in the winter when it's snowing nonstop and so so windy that your lips would become absolutely chapped beyond belief. So cold, in fact, there was a time where some of my platoon mates got hypothermia because it was like 2 a.m., we were wet, and we were sleeping on the ground. And if you have ever slept outside in the winter before, then you know that the earth just sucks the warmth right out of your soul. In moments like that, you would literally give up your left pinky toe for a hand warmer. It's learning lessons like that which made me grateful for things I took for granted for almost all of my life. And lo and behold, 
most of us have a heater in our homes to keep us warm this winter. This is your daily reminder to count your blessings because whatever the situation may be, it could be worse. Sometimes we get so caught up in the daily grind of life that we just complain and forget how fortunate we really are to live in the Western world. I personally am grateful that I have AC in the summer and a heater in the winter. That's for sure. Moving right along, let's talk about some current events that have happened to the company recently. So back in 2020, during the pandemic, the leadership agreed to cut the dividend by 33%. So essentially it went from 94 cents a quarter as a dividend payout down to 63 cents a quarter. Although it was devastating at the time, it is worth mentioning that Dominion has paid out over 380 quarterly dividend payments in its history. They may have cut it here and there, but they never removed it like Disney did. And while we're on the topic of overcoming adversity, let's go ahead and take a look at their free cash flow. My goodness, it looks like almost every single year it has been negative. So it is worth mentioning that Dominion, along with other utility stocks, they usually have negative free cash flows because utility companies require a ton of capital and cash to grow their operations, to rebuild solar panels, to expand power grids, to replace aging equipment, and etc. A utility company is regulated by the government to not be as greedy as other companies, so their profit margins aren't as good. Their sole purpose is to provide power to family homes and to businesses. So deep down inside, I agree with this relationship and the regulations that are in place. Can you imagine for one second having to pay $5,000 a month for your one bedroom apartment in the winter just to have the heater on because investors wanted the utility company to maximize the bottom line? That would be out outrageous. And the last thing that I wanted to talk about is back in 2021, Dominion sold their gas business to Warren Buffett's Berkshire Hathaway. And since then, the stock has been shaky because they also cut the dividend and they reduced their revenue streams. But Dominion is laser focused on the future because they have this project of offshore windmills to compensate for getting rid of their gas business whenever that comes to life. They have a target timeline of 2026. And by the way, those windmills are located in Virginia. Next up, we are going to take a look at their most recent earnings report. So Wall Street predicted that Dominion Energy would report 78 cents per share. However, they reported 77 cents per share. On the flip side, the forecast was for them to hit $4.38 billion in revenue. However, they reported $3.81 billion in revenue instead. So they missed both the top and the bottom line. So let's see what they prioritize in their earnings presentation. The first thing that they talked about on the earnings call was their safety record and how the OSHA recordable incident rate is going down by a lot. Yeah, this is a pretty impressive call out because they are 74% safer than the industry average. I suppose because their financials aren't looking good, they want to talk about the intangibles. I, I get it. It makes sense. So right now, other than safety being prioritized, Dominion is placing a huge emphasis on paying down its debt obligation and has recently paid off $3.3 billion dollars with plans to spend all after-tax earnings to pay down even more of their long-term debt. Dominion's financial vision right now is to spend roughly $9 billion a year on paying off its long-term debt. And this one is really interesting. So the CEO's name is Bob Blue. That sounds like a pilot's call sign, by the way. <laughs> Anyways, the board of directors decided to restructure the CEO's compensation package to reflect success in the stock because the stock has been sledding downhill lately. And if the stock does poor Poorly, then Bob is going to be eating McDonald's a lot more often than he already does. Performance-based compensation means that the CEO has a lot more motive to ensure that Dominion does well, unless he likes pain and misery. The CEO is either going to have to deliver or he's going to be shown the door. And a side note on this, it says 100% committed to the current dividend. This is why it's so important to read between the lines. Because the payout ratio of the dividend is higher than the industry average, they plan on on holding off on growing the dividend payment. What you see right now is what you're going to be paid for the time being if you are a shareholder. 66 cents a quarter is what you're going to be seeing. And to keep it safe, what they are going to do is focus on building a fortress balance sheet like JP Morgan Chase and Jamie Dimon. With that said, I'm not trying to sound cynical and negative, but I wouldn't be surprised if they do end up cutting their dividend by like 40% in the next year or two just to keep it safe. 
because the last thing a utility company, which is in a mature industry, wants to do is to remove their dividend altogether. Because if they do that, then no investors are going to want to touch Dominion with a 20-foot stick. And this slide right here just confirms the timeline for the offshore windmills to be done by 2026. And when it comes to the timeline, it does look like they are making significant progress because it is now 77% complete. And the last thing that I want to mention from their earnings report is that for the past decade or so, they have been growing their revenue at a steady pace of 3.43% annually. So just at the mark of inflation on a historic average. Okie dokie. Next, let's go ahead and take a deeper look at the technical indicators to see what the stock price movement has to tell us. So about a year ago, it does look like that Dominion traded for $80 per share. And since then, it's been trading downwards, hitting its lower Bollinger Band time and time again. And as of October, they reached that oversold category because their RSI was sitting at about 23. And since then, it does look like it hit its bottom and it's been rebounding at a very positive trajectory because it hit its upper Bollinger Band and the RSI is flirting with 69. They are in the healthy category now. So it looks like the market and other investors are feeling bullish about Dominion again. All right, we made it. This is my favorite part of the video. Because although looking at the intangibles is nice and interesting, the numbers and finances and the data that we're about to go through together, they tell a different story. They do not lie. Anyways, what we are about to do is run some valuation models to figure out the intrinsic value for Dominion Energy. The first one that we are going to do is called the multiples valuation. Essentially, we are going to derive at an intrinsic value for Dominion based on similar companies in the same industry as them and how the market prices them. So every single one of these companies, they are a utility company. And the median PE ratio for this industry is 23.7. So based on that, the intrinsic value for Dominion is $46.46, which I believe the current trading price is $46. So that is pretty close. Next, we are going to move right along to the dividend discount model. Essentially, we are going to derive an intrinsic price for Dominion based on its average dividend growth rate. It looks like Dominion increased their dividend payout by 2.45%. And then they slashed it by 33%. And then the following year, they raised it by 4.75%. Because of the skewed data point, the average dividend growth rate is negative 6%. However, what we are going to do is make a more realistic, educated guess and say that they are going to increase their dividend by 3%. I know right now that Dominion is freezing any increases to the dividend, but in the future, in the next two to four years, they are going to start growing the dividend payout again. So I'm assuming that it's going to be around 3%. So based on that assumption, the intrinsic value from the DDM model is $55.21 which is not too crazy considering that about a year ago Dominion traded at $80 per share. So the last valuation model that we are going to run together is the bear model. I'm sorry, I meant the Benny Graham's valuation model. The reason why I refer to it as the bear model is because almost every single time this valuation model spits out the bear case, the lowest intrinsic value. Essentially, we are going to reach an intrinsic value for Dominion based on its growth rate rejection alongside with the current AAA corporate bonds yield rate. So the gram value for Dominion is $27.38 per share. Oh boy, that is really low. But anyways, and now we have reached the conclusion. We are going to find out together if Dominion is a delicious or if it's a disgusting dividend determination. So the intrinsic value for Dominion based on our numbers, drum roll please, ba 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 is going to be $43.02. Right now, it's trading roughly at about $45, plus or minus a dollar or two. So on a preliminary judgment basis, it does look like Dominion is overvalued. But before we jump to conclusions, let's take a look at what Wall Street has to say. What do the analysts say the price target should be? Wall Street says that Dominion should be $50.17 a share, which is a 6.83% upside to its current trading price. The low forecast is $46 and the high forecast is $58. 
dollars. So we said Dominion is $43 a share. Wall Street says $50 a share. So let's think about this. If you are considering jumping into Dominion, let's figure out what is the acceptable buy price. So at its current trading price at $45 a share, with a 10% margin of safety applied, then you would be looking to jump into Dominion when it reaches a price, $38.71 per share. That just made me very curious about their 52 week low. So they did hit $39.71. 18 cents per share back in the end of October right here. So what is my opinion about Dominion Energy? After running through the valuation models together and looking through their earnings report and their intangibles, their catalysts, and their risks, and looking at all the different metrics, how I would conclude Dominion is this. So because Dominion is not delicious, nor is it disgusting, I would say it's something in between. Like a three-day-old McDonald's burger left in the fridge. When you reheat it, it's still going to be edible, but it's just not as good as if it was fresh. If you are interested in Dominion, then you really have to have a long-term investing horizon because its short-term fate is not looking great. If you believe in Dominion, you must see something that I do not. You must believe in their turnaround story. And I say that to you as someone who has actually invested in Dominion Energy. My thought process at the time was, if I am going to be paying Dominion every single month for my electricity bill, then I might as well get a dividend payment from them right back. And at the time, I thought I would invest in a utility company as a defensive, recession-proof position, which they really are. But Dominion has just been so unlucky these past few years. Then again, I think a catalyst for Dominion that we did not talk about is if you look at what happened to an industry peer known as PG&E, I'm not talking about Procter & Gamble, but I'm talking about PG&E, the electric utility company based in Northern California. When you look at PG&E's stock recovery story, it is mind-blowing. So what happened is their negligence in maintaining their equipment directly led to wildfires that caused a bunch of disasters and problems. And not to go into too many details, but it led to terrible consequences. And as a result of the lawsuits, they had to declare bankruptcy. And now their stock is up 260% from their low in 2019 after all was said and done. Even when a utility company makes a mistake or has a devastating result, from the PG&E story, it looks like the market still forgives them with enough time. Or at least that's what happened with PG&E. Maybe Dominion Energy will have a recovery story in a few years. I can't tell the future. So Dominion Energy stock is a hold rating. It is not a buy, nor is it a sell. And one of the reasons as to why I didn't sell my shares of Dominion is because in the long run, I think they're going to be okay. Dominion is a company with a proven history and a track record of being committed to the dividend. And I think about what Peter Lynch said, when it comes to investing, it's not a matter of the brain, but it's a matter of the stomach. Can you handle the ups and the downs? So I think Dominion is going to have a rough year or two, but I think in the next 10 to 20 years, they're going to be okay. So I'm just going to hang on and keep getting those qualified dividend payments. With that said, this has been another episode of Dividend Compounders with Cheese. I'll talk to you next time. Stay safe.